We're back here on Healthy Living. I am here with Dr. Cal Sharp. It is wonderful to see you. Uh, you. I would love to say this is our first interview, but it isn't. <laughs> we, were, we were just talking, you've got a 16-year-old now, and I think I remember right. when uh, he was born. <laughs> yep. Just saying. Talk to me, if you will, today a little bit about what minimally invasive cardiology means. Well, minimal invasive uh, cardiology, well, there's invasive and interventional cardiology, and then there's non-invasive uh, okay. cardiology. So uh, as an interventional cardiologist, uh, we I do invasive procedures. The heart catheterization okay. is considered an, an invasive uh, cardiac procedure. It's not surgery, it's not open chest surgical procedure, uh, but it is considered an invasive procedure because we obviously invade. Invade. And, yeah, and, we're invading. And, uh, right. Yes. Uh huh. Um, uh, there's non-invasive cardiology uh, is, uh, is procedures like stress tests and echo Got tests it. and and things like that and ultrasounds and th th those are sort of the non-invasive approaches of diagnostic tools from a non-invasive standpoint. So, clinical assessment in the office, um, uh, ultra EKGs, ultrasounds, stress testing, nuclear imaging. Those are non-invasive tests. I have just basic questions. A CT for scan you. also. Okay, is a non -invasive so okay. Test, exact. Test, I have of basic questions sure. for you about cardiology. Um, do cardiologists? Do you often act as a um, primary care doctor or? <laughs> Or well, understand, and and uh, and and it's a tough question because, of course, uh, from a, a cardiology standpoint, we we typically try to take care of specific the whole, the whole thing, but yeah. cardio cardiovascular symptoms and cardiovascular okay. issues. But uh, typically, that comes along with risk factors and medical management of that cardiovascular disease. So it it does bleed into the management of hypertension and uh, cholesterol. Uh, maybe not so much diabetic management, mm -hmm. uh, but certainly uh, um, tobacco cessation counseling and and things like that that we get into. Certainly lifestyle modification counseling and discussion about diet and exercise and the importance of exercise and, and lifestyle modification. There's about seven shows we could do right there with that one <laughs> right, sentence. I right. mean, honestly, there really is. And, right. and that leads me just going back full circle is when is it appropriate to right. come and see a cardiologist? Right. Um, at what age? What symptoms? Well, you know, oftentimes it really uh, certainly symptoms, uh, mm -hmm. you know, somebody is having chest pain or shortness of breath or some uh, some functional uh, exertionally related symptom or concern. Um, uh, those are oftentimes symptoms that would oftentimes lead somebody to even seek emergent care or urgent care, which would then uh, tend to, to lead to a consultation with cardiology and some follow up uh, further evaluation okay. of a symptom. Uh, but uh, just for a routine establishment of cardiovascular care, often that times that includes just a self-assessment of uh, or mm -hmm. a physician primary care a physician's assessment of one's general risk strong family history of heart I just disease was, yeah um, i was just going to say if i have a strong family history and right. i know that my dad or mom had a heart had heart sure. disease and i it makes sense to and get plugged in at least to be established that's just what i say right. can i come in for a baseline screening sure we we're probably not going to take over all of the the primary care management of risk factors and cholesterol blood pressure but certainly oftentimes we'll get referred patients or patients will self refer for establishment of care because they have a strong family history or they have diabetes or, or risk uh, multiple mm -hmm. risk factors and they just want to get plugged in and so we'll we'll take the opportunity to look over their risk factors and and counsel them on management and, and look at their medications and make sure things are appropriate uh, not, not everybody needs testing of course no. sometimes it's just a matter of right. of assessment assessing their clinical well-being and their functional capacity is super important Super is, important for exercise. I just was going to say, is cardiology as much a prevention? A pre what's the right word? What am I trying to say? Is there a lot of specialty? Thank you. Um, you know, sometimes, uh, okay. uh, you know, certainly uh, the majority of things we do during our day is, is go to the office and see clinic patients. And uh, not everybody walks in with having unstable symptoms and problems. So sometimes it's a matter of trying to uh, provide a degree of preventive uh, services, either primary prevention, what we call primary prevention, which is trying to prevent the first event, okay. um, or even secondary prevention, which is um, somebody who's had a clinical event, uh -huh. a cardiac event, and we're trying to prevent the next or the subsequent uh, And events. so going back to the lifestyle sure. um, things that you were talking about, what are 
I don't really need you to tell me. I think we probably yeah, all could understand. say the words. It's right. just, do we want to say the words? <laughs> what do we need to be doing? Well, you know, the most the thing that makes, uh, the, the most important thing that sometimes can make our, our job a little easier is when the patient comes in and they're very active. Uh, okay. First and foremost, that they're exercising. So from a cardiovascular standpoint, when we try to tease out symptoms, uh, we're often teasing out symptoms of, of flow restriction, blood vessel issues, so fuel line problems, uh, okay. supply demand sort of situation. So if the patient's coming in and, and they're exercising regularly and they're maintaining good, moderate, sustained 30, 45 minutes of, of moderate pace activity, whatever that activity is. I was going to say, what does that look like in the real uh, world? Moderate paced walking, uh, okay. swimming, biking, um, you know, it, it, any of those good moderate, moderate activities that are sustained. That are, sus okay. that are is, sustained cardio exercises. Is it exercise. movement too? It is movement. It okay. is movement. Uh, uh, you know, certainly is something that we, you try to get the heart rate up a little bit. That okay. puts, puts workload on the on the heart muscle and and therefore if you're doing that and you're you're doing moderate sustained activity um, four five preferably seven days a week uh -huh. and you're having no symptoms or exertional symptoms or limitations and then the concept of me putting you on a stress test and doing a bunch of testing and procedures to somebody is just not necessary as long as they're feeling well and as doing well as long as they're feeling well yeah. what about food and fuel well, it's certainly uh, the primary goal that we try to, to counsel is just portion management. Uh, that's We start there, tend to start there, okay. because that's typically where weight loss uh, can occur. Happens. Portion okay. management and, and watching calories and calories in and calories out. And then just healthy eating habits, uh, well well balanced, um, uh, good healthy proteins, minimizing you know simple sugars and, and, and simple carbohydrates and, and, uh, and just a good well balanced uh, portion control and diet. you're talking to a psychologist here what part <laughs> does stress play in heart disease or symptoms well certainly uh, uh, stress is a, a significant factor certainly uh, emotional stress uh, can can cause elevated heart rates elevated sure. blood pressure and you know certainly emotional stress uh, can then it's how people re react to emotional stress right. how do they how do they compensate for that do they do they take their stress into uh, cigarettes or, or alcohol or eating Numb or, avoid escape. <laughs> right, or, right. or do they try to refocus their stress and and take a mental break and go for a go for a walk exactly uh, to try to try to uh, refocus their energy and 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 take that stress in a different direction and so you're that's my that's my nickel's worth of cycle psycho psychology yeah, but, but you'd probably do it every day well here i got one more for you right. what about sleep right um does sleep impact um any kind of um sure cardiovascular yeah, symptoms absolutely uh you know good sleep patterns and particularly uh uh Sleep apnea okay. uh, is a can play a significant role in uh, increasing uh, uh, cardiac conditions. Increases the risk of, of, of hypertension. Can play a role in in increasing the risk and management of atrial fibrillation. Uh, sometimes patients that uh, have long-standing uh, sleep apnea can sometimes develop congestive heart failure uh, based oh, wow. on um, uh, long-standing untreated and unmanaged sleep apnea. So so good sleep habits, certainly good sleep habits uh, right. help people Hygiene. stay rested and, mm -hmm. and feel energetic for the next day, but taking it a step further, uh, appropriate uh, evaluation and management of sleep apnea is important in trying to minimize cardiovascular effects. And I know this is really a broad spectrum kind of approach to mm -hmm. talking to you today, but I think the things that we're talking about are really important, pretty basic, and something that we all need to be stewards of our own life. Sure. Style. I mean, certainly a little bit of uh, practice, uh, what, what do, you do what I say and, and and, yeah. instead of do what I do all the time. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but certainly, uh, you know, I certainly just even in the, the, the little things, uh, going to the grocery store, parking, uh, don't drive around for the for next 10 minutes looking for the closest parking space. Just park and take a flight of stairs if you have the opportunity. Uh, taking a walk in the middle of the day. I know people work and yes. it's, it, you know. and uh, I ran and, up and down the steps here. Yeah, and, it, and it's mm -hmm. it's difficult to, to counsel patients, uh, particularly those that are working on a regular sure. basis or have arthritic limitations that are a little older and have had some orthopedic procedures or bad backs. And so mm -hmm. it's important just to try to make sure they're staying creative. Exactly. Uh, I tell them that you know if they don't, if they can't swim or they don't like riding a bike, then don't tr don't pick that. Right. That activity. <laughs> Good thinking. Uh, but do it what's physically, you know, what they're physically and emotionally capable of doing. So if if 
low impact activities, recumbent mm -hmm. bikes, uh, uh, swimming pools. A lot of that's been difficult. Uh, fitness With, centers have been closed yes. and swimming pools have been closed. So there's, there's been a lot of difficulty in, in maintaining uh, lifestyle modification. But you can always walk around the block. There's always stuff we can do. Like there's I said, I've been running up and down the right. steps, yeah. exactly. And, and certainly try not to browbeat uh, uh, and, and, and certainly just make that. sure they're in, encouraged to try to just just to think of something that they might be able to enjoy doing a little bit and just change a little something. You're wonderful, mm -hmm. Dr. Sharp. As always, it's a treat to talk to you. And the more that you, uh, we get to know you and you share with us, the more questions we have. <laughs> well, thanks Thank for having me. Thank you so much. Yes, Thank absolutely. you all for joining us here on Healthy Living.